Hey, tonight's Behind the Counter with Mind Schooled Games is actually on a Friday because we plan to host a special holiday event. So it's the Friday before Halloween. And tonight's the first night we offered a free FM with standards. So we're in month five, and this is our first free FM. And part of the reason we did it, we, we've been hovering between, you know, when we first started, there weren't very many active players in Great Bend who had standard decks in Magic the Gathering because they didn't have a card shop to go play at. So we opened up and we did drafts because people needed cards. So most of our FNMs so far have been drafts. And then we split where people can pick whether they draft or they do standard. And you know, sometimes that, that pick actually meant that we were lower numbers on either. So with Halloween coming up, we thought, ah, let's test the waters. Let's see where we're at. ixalan has been real hot. I got three boxes left. I started with 30. That means we put 27 boxes of Ixalan in the market. Uh, plus bundle boxes and all that. There's a lot of product in the community right now. There's a lot of trading going on. We've sold a lot of singles. So we wanted to see just how much standard we have. And we have a 20-player FNM. And if you see the little guy back there that's six years old, that's my son. He's got a Hualtli dinosaur deck. Uh, so we're out here having fun. Good night, good turnout. Now with a free FNM, uh, in our product categories in Square that track our sales, events is actually our fourth leading category. It's probably a tenth of our total income is our events. And events sometimes come with product like drafts, but usually we charge $5 per head in this type of event and then we give out packs as prizes at the end. Tonight we're not charging, we're using uh, the F&M promos and you know we're not making the money in the same way but we're getting good data. To know that we have 20 players here, to have them all together, to feel the community, to be able to bring people together they can, so they can see how much the Magic community has grown in Great Bend since we opened up. Uh, we got people here from Larned, we got people from Hutch. Where are you guys from? We got people here from Lewis. Uh, we got lots of people from Great Bend. We got a guy moving to Wichita next week. But we have lots of people from lots of places that have chosen to make MindSculpt Games their third place. It's not home, it's not work, it's where they hang out to have fun. So they, they feel like they belong here, they have friends here. They can sit down and play and you know what? When you're paired up with somebody, you go sit down to them, it doesn't matter if they don't like you, it doesn't matter if they don't know you, they're going to talk to you civil and they're going to play with you. So, I mean, it's a good way to, to build friendships and relationships and it's a good way for us on a holiday where we have an excuse to give free F&M to see where our standard players really are. So moving forward, um, October is kind of kind of a hard month in the game retailer uh, genre. I don't know, what do you call that? Corporations in our entities. Um, in our sector of retail, I'm failing for words. But October's not the hugest sales area for us. And even come like November and Black Friday, I haven't been through a Black Friday yet as a retailer, and I'm not sure we're even gonna be open on Black Friday, we'll figure that out. But um, small stores aren't always thought of a lot between October and November, and people are gonna travel a lot. So how often people sit down and play in our store, um, October, to be honest, is one of our lower cash flow months through the counter. Now, it's actually one of our best months uh, selling singles online. We got, um, shoot, I spent probably more money than I'll make in store on collections this month, which is really good because I love to buy collections and we don't mind making the money elsewhere. But the truth is, we're just slower with our foot traffic right now. And it's kind of just that way across the industry. That's the word I was looking for earlier was industry. So we, we have to, at this point, we're four months in. We've done most of our major purchases. Like we wanted to fill out our board games. We started with about 100. We now have about 200. We have uh, Warhammer Foundations Plus rack. We got everything in standard for Magic. We got up to ordering 30 boxes of Ixalan. We got Card Fight Vanguard in stock. We got Pokemon. We've been stocking more and more Pokemon because Trainer Tuesday's doing well. And basically, what we laid out for growth before we opened our doors, we've met our business plan goals as far as our layout and our structure. So the way the store was supposed to look when we were drawing it on paper still, is pretty much there. Now we would like more square footage one day. Uh, we'd like to sell through some certain things. You know, there's things, some things I'm kind of gonna like Warhammer painted armies. You're probably not gonna see them in the store too much longer. We haven't sold very many. I'm gonna clear that space out. Um, we still got some decisions to make, but the truth is what happens from here is less planned and more organic. 
So for us to be able to get the data of having a free FNM where we have 20 players show up who have standard decks, actually there were a couple of guys that didn't have standard decks that either borrowed one or that bought a Planeswalker deck and played tonight, but players willing to do that is a good thing. So we are going to focus a little bit more on standard going forward. We'll still move with drafts. The Wizards Play Network, Wizards of the Coast, is offering an amazing incentive for drafters at the end of the year. If a drafter from this Saturday till the end of the year plays at six drafts at one store, so six drafts at MindSculpt Games, they get two free standard showdown packs. That's kind of a big deal. Um, those packs would sell pretty well on the secondary market. We can't sell them. But a player that cracks those has a really good chance at rares, at mythics, at foils. Uh, the pack value of a standard showdown pack is huge. And to get two free of those just for participating in drafts, I mean, you can become a much better drafter, you can support your local game store, you get to keep all the cards that you draft, you might get prizes on top of it, uh, but those standard showdown packs mean your value is pretty much guaranteed in your drafts if you get six of them in between now and the end of the year, so January 1st. October 28th to January 1st, there's plenty of time to draft. We got the dino-sized weekend coming up on Saturday, that'll be the first eligible draft. And we'll still have more drafts, um, but we have players with cards. We have players with standard decks. So one of the organic moves we make is we start supporting our standard environment more. MindSculpt Games is, is built, and we have a, a vision, and we definitely have a business plan. But part of our business plan is to look at what our customers want, look at what's producing um, real money for us, and try to match those and build a store that meets our customer base and what they want. So my orders are based on my clientele and our events are based on our clientele. And if somebody says, I want to play Card Fight Vanguard tournaments and they start recruiting for them and they build our player base, then we start hosting Card Fight Vanguard tournaments. I'm in the process of uh, registering with Bushy Road. So we'll be on that. And I got my professor program um, approved. My background check is complete for Pokemon. So one of these days we'll be able to post a, host a Pokemon pre-release. But the truth is, we're growing, and this month might not be a growing month for overall sales and foot traffic in store because it's October in the game retailer industry, uh, but, but we can focus on that player growth. We had some middle schoolers come in on a field trip, and we hosted them for free, and since then, I think we've had three different parents from that group come in and make purchases. So our growth this time, we hosted our first ACT camp, and hopefully word of mouth is what's going to get us that we do good things for the community that we're not too worried about our bottom line in foot traffic in the store or dollar sales in the store but that we're providing what our customers want that we're making a good family-based environment here that we got the type of product people are asking for and that we support the events they want so big night for mindscope games tonight we got 20 players in our standard uh, my son's one of them and uh tomorrow we have our dino sized weekend but Magic is kicking on, on all four cylinders. We were a little worried on some FNMs, like if we were getting enough people. And part of that was probably the divide between draft and standard. And we'll, we'll have to figure it out. Part of why we're doing this tonight is to figure out what our calendar looks like for November. But with 20 people showing up that have standard decks or have invested in standard or are willing to play a Planeswalker deck, that means we can host standard. Um, now, I don't know if everybody here would be here if we charged $5. $5 isn't a ton, but it is it's a barrier to entry. So... Um, you know, we can't run FNM for free every night because we end up, we're usually open till 9. FNM will run past 9. It's 9.11 right now. And I think they got more to play. But the truth is, my husband and I, and even Eli right now, we don't mind being here. It's kind of like a busman's holiday. So right now we're still having fun. I guess I like talking to the camera. Um, but what we're doing is we're trying to, to build for the future. So... October will be a decent month, mainly because we have three revenue sources, not just our in-store sales, uh, because we made a couple good buys, and if you buy right, you make your money when you buy. Um, and we've, we've activated those sales channels already. Um, and the next month, there's a couple big releases. We have Iconic Masters coming in, uh, from the Vault Transform coming in. So I'm thinking, as long as we're building our player base and our player base is building our player base, like telling people, hey, MindSculpt Games is a fun place to be, let's go play some games, they have good events, uh, they have nice selection, they have singles there, you can trade in, they're kind of nice people. If those things happen, then we can continue to grow and we can go out there. But, it, you know, it, 
you might be watching me on Facebook, but not all of my customers are, and I, that's understandable. What's going to matter more than me talking or my design or what I put in the business plan or anything that I say is what your friends say. So if you have a friend that's been at this magic tournament and they say, hey, come check out a Planeswalker deck, that's how we get new customers. Or we have a kid who shows up for a field trip and he says to his dad, wow, it was so much fun to play that board game. Can we get some board games to play at the house? Or maybe next family gathering for Thanksgiving, can we have a board game out so we don't get bored? I mean, <laughs> it kind of works like that. So we're just hoping that we're doing the right things with people that care that we're trying to do the right things, that we're investing in our community, that we're building a place where people feel safe, feel comfortable, can build friendships, that we're supporting play, uh, and that they choose to help us make ourselves long-term. That if they have a choice of a pack between, you know, someone that's got a bunch of buildings in a bunch of places across the world or us with our one building knowing that we need them as customers that they make their purchase here, uh, that really does help if people shop local and shop small. Um, but, you know, we're, we're pretty resilient and we know our customers are going to have multiple places to buy just like we have multiple places to sell. But the more our customers appreciate our table space, our events, our mission, our vision, our, our videos, our customer service, talking to us, the better off we are. So behind the counter, busy night, we're running our Windows, oh, sorry, Wizards event reporter. We're running lots of transactions. We're trying to get rare binders going so people have more to browse than just our browse box. Um, lots of work to do, still working on our data. Square is getting better at the scanner. All of our board games right now are scannable so I can track what I sell and I can reorder it easier besides trying to just guess what was on my shelf when I had one of them um, and things are going well so if you're around and you want to try us out support your friendly local game store we'd love to see you if you play magic and you haven't been in yet this is a hopping place if you played back in Mirrodin time to get back in it if you've never played and want to learn we'll give you free planeswalkers decks no 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 sorry we will give you free uh, what are they called free demo decks that Wizards of the Coast gives us for free. Sorry, I didn't mean to say you could get a $15.75 Planeswalker deck for free, but they're pretty cheap and affordable, and you can come to an F&M, buy one of those, and play and have fun. So hopefully we see you around. If not, well, at least you get to see an entrepreneur's view of a busy counter trying to grow, be lightning on our feet, so that we uh, stay up with a business that's constantly evolving. See you around.